They have gone up 310%. This is a little bit of an anomaly because the S&P is not equally weighted. Hi, this is Nathan. Welcome back to Independence Money. Today's topic, how magnificent is the Magnificent Seven? Right now, by the way, that's a good movie. I liked it with Denzel Washington personally better, but um, yeah, not what we're talking about. We're talking about these seven stocks of the technology sector that are just leading the market. And I've got some really good charts. As always, if you want my chart book, you can email me, Nathan, at independence-money.com. So these, we used to call them the FANG stocks until Facebook and Google had to mess up their names. So now it is uh, Meta, Amazon, Alphabet, um, Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, and Tesla. So these are the stocks that are really driving the market, exceeding the rates of return of the broader indexes. So this chart right here shows that yes, these stocks are volatile and have some risks. So in around January of 2022, when we hit the peak and we went into a bear market, these puppies slid out of bed by the tune of 47%. Now, since that bottom in January of 2023, they have gone up 310%. That is moving compared to the NASDAQ at 79, which of course they're part of, and the S&P at 57. So are they overvalued? Well, first off, they're a trillion dollars of valuation between these seven, but they continue to beat earnings expectation like Nvidia just did because it's participating in the AI demographic. But um, you know, the PE ratio of the NASDAQ is, is quite high. It's risen about 40%. The Dow is around 19%. So the PE ratio of the S&P 500 is now at 20. Historically, it's at 15. So you could have the naysayers out there saying we could expect a big market crash or correction, but it is below the height of where it was before the bear market of 2022, and it is still below where it was before the dot-com bubble burst. So we're not in excessive valuation. I always say that valuations are just part of the mix. They do tell you what you get for your money, but they're not a 100% indicator of market timing or market direction, because you have to remember the market is a forward forecaster. So a lot of times you see valuations go up and then sales and earnings are released, which back up what those valuations are, meaning those valuations could be brought back into line without having the stock price having to have a massive correction. Now, of course, if they don't meet their earnings, then that's where we see that big volatility. So I, I think that, you know, I think that things could stabilize with decreasing interest rates, continuing to make sales and earnings forecast, which so far we've been on a pretty good track for. But as this chart shows you stock market valuations across every sector from price to book to sales to price to cash flow, the dividend ratio and price to earnings are all well above where they were a year ago. So I think it's important to be very diversified and wise with your decisions on how money is managed. That being said, this is a little bit of an anomaly because the S&P is not equally weighted. So if, meaning the bigger stocks have a bigger percentage of the S&P. And if you look at this over a period of time since 1996, as this chart will show you, the S&P has done 7.3% annually. Work equal weighted S&P is above that at over 8%. Again, this is a statistic that backs up having a diversified portfolio. It's also why I typically like to rebalance portfolios because as things get bigger, they have a higher percentage of the risk as an individual stock position in the portfolio. So trimming it back to the equal weighting is one way to maintain that diversification. Um, now here is a vote for these stocks because so many of Americans are in 401ks. A lot of people don't put a lot of decision making into how they pick their investment options and they just check that S&P box. And that means lots more money is going into S&P indexed funds. 
which like I mentioned, it's not equally weighted, which means more and more money is going into these bigger positions of the Magnificent Seven. So that could support a continued run on these information technology stocks. Of course, time will tell. Certainly appreciate your thoughts and what you think is going to happen with these leaders called the Magnificent Seven. All right, y'all take care.